Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a Doomsday Excruciator combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, playing this 6 mana 6-6 six, six flying demon and when it enters, if it was cast, each player exiles all but the bottom 6 cards of their library face down and at the beginning of our upkeep, assuming we still control the Excruciator, we also get to draw an additional card. Could be a bit of a drawback when you only have 6 cards left in your library, so we will need an additional way of milling the opponent to close out a game with the Excruciator after reducing their library down to 6 cards. And that's where Scavenger's Talent will come in handy. On level 1 this enchantment will give us a food token when our creatures die, but on level 2, whenever we sacrifice a permanent target player mills 2 cards. So sacrificing a food token, or maybe a treasure token, or even a map token can now help mill the opponent for 2, and it doesn't take many talent triggers to mill them out when they only have 6 cards left in their library. So that's our game plan. And the reason I like this approach, as opposed to maybe playing a Rakdos into Excruciator, which is also a combo that can win you the game if both creatures survive, is that we don't really rely on any of our creatures surviving, we just need the Excruciator to be cast and reduce the opponent's library, and then the talent can do the rest, so we don't really rely on any creatures, so if our opponent has a bunch of creature removal, we don't really care. And then we can also get the talent to level 3, where we can maybe bring back creatures out of our graveyard, although do keep in mind, if we reanimate the Excruciator, it's not going to trigger since it only happens if we actually cast it, although it could still be a 6-6 six, six flyer that draws an additional card each turn, so it's still definitely fine to reanimate, which is why sometimes we initially want to mill ourselves before starting to mill the opponent with the level 2 talent. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of our deck, of course we do need a lot of interaction to stay alive long enough to cast a 6 mana demon and to level up the talent, so that's where all this instant speed removal will come in handy. Definitely prepared for the mono red matchup with 4 copies of Cutdown. This figure is also good against Scamp and Heartfire Hero since we can reduce their power so we don't take any damage. And then Anoint with Affliction is the best possible answer against mono red, exiling their creatures. And then 2 copies of Shieldress Edict, also good against the new red-white aura decks that have been popping up, also potential answer to planeswalkers, which were otherwise pretty weak to. And then we've got lots of 1 mana creatures, a greedy freebooter, when it dies makes a treasure and lets us cry, so that's perfect for ramping into our demon, can also help trigger the scavenger's talent, and we can sacrifice it ourselves with a fanatical offering, drawing 2 cards and making a map token, so that can also help cycle through the deck, and then the leftover map token also synergizes quite well with our talent, and the link breaker another 1 drop that will leave behind a 1-1 one -one mercenary creature token, so again a great synergy with a scavenger's talent as well. And then Treasure Map is possibly the most important card outside of our combo pieces, as we can play it early to start scrying to improve our draw steps, can make it so we don't draw multiple Excruciators since we only really need one of them, and then eventually flips into Treasure Cove making 3 treasure tokens, and that makes it a lot easier to potentially cast our Excruciator and have some leftover treasures we can still easily sacrifice, so we can immediately trigger the Scavenger's Talent to win the game, so we don't even give the opponent an additional untap step. And then in our mana base, just 20 swamps and then 4 copies of Cavern of Souls, so we don't even need to worry about counter spells on the Excruciator. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing quite a few pieces, but we do have good removal early, so hopefully we'll find a treasure map or some other card draw. And our opponent is on the red aggro deck with Leyline. I guess we're fine to play Link Breaker here. So we've got our first three creatures covered. And yeah, I'm fine just using cut down right now. Since it can be awkward if our opponent casts a pump spell in response. And then now we can go shields up on Shielder's Edict. Opponent had another Swiss Spear. I'll take it for now. And Fanatical Offering was a good draw. So we'll pass, double block, make our opponent cast a spell, and then we can Edict. Could also Offering first. But then, yeah, I guess we wouldn't have the treasure with the Link Breaker. Monstrous Rage, that happens. Can see if they want to cast another Pump Spell here. And now we can Edict. Put 
Upon maybe thinking about manifesting dread and response or making some detectives with felonious rage. Fair enough. So they will have two leftover detectives. And scavenger's talent, the draw. So this turn, I might have to main phase offering the Link Breaker just to try and hit my land drop. If I play talent first, I also get to make a food token. Yeah, I guess at this point, Shielder's Edict is not very effective when they have multiple creatures they can target. So may as well get the food token then. Alright, found the Excruciator. So we have most of the pieces we need, we just need to survive long enough. Which might prove to be tricky. Opponent attacks all out, so we could try and take it, especially if there's another Monstrous Rage or a Dreadmaw's Ire. I guess that's also going to destroy our artifacts, which is too bad. We can maybe block one of them with a, a Link Breaker, or we can just try and double block anyway. I think I'll block one of them. Alright. Soaked up a little bit of damage. And it does seem like they might be out of pump spells here. Possible they have more ley lines in hand or cell sword. Hardfire hero we can at least pinpoint with the Shieldred's Edict. And this figure now not a bad draw either. So what's our plan? Can just pass with everything available. Could also fanatical offering a mercenary now to try and draw into a land. I think I just keep up all my mana. And then I'm just going to block Hardfire Hero. Opponent does have the Monstrous Rage. So we can first see what else they try and target with the Monstrous Rage. And then I could try to disfigure that detective and then Edict on non-token. And hope they didn't pick up another pump spell in the meantime. That works. Now, of course, Disfigure and Hardfire Hero could have worked out better in the sense that we don't take any damage. But given the restriction of Shieldred's Edict, I think this worked out fine. And now a cut down as well. So I could try and cut down now. Just to make sure the coast is clear. Hit you for one just in case, and then sack to Fanatical Offering. To try and hit our land drops. Still nothing. Alright, at least Freebooter we can sacrifice and leave behind a treasure token. As our opponent passes. And then we also want to eventually level up the Scavenger's Talents. So, can maybe sack a map token as well to hit our land drop for next turn. Don't need another one. So now I might just go for the Fanatical Offering on Freebooter. Plenty of food to gain life if needed. Keep Swamp on top. So we can play Excruciator, and then next turn we'll probably be able to mill them out. Opponent finally hard casting another ley line that they had stuck in hand. Alright, so what's the fastest way to do this? Level up the talents. And then maybe start sacking some map tokens here. Mill the opponents. Can keep it on top. Mill you for two again. So even if they somehow had removal for Excruciator, we still would have been able to get there. And there we go, pass a turn, no need to attack. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got double talents. Usually only need the first. 
but they can generate more food tokens, which play well with some of our author sacrifice synergies. Don't have removal, so against aggro we might be in a bit of trouble. And then turn one, I'll play a talent. Since I'm probably not going to curve Freebooter into Offering when we want to get the talents going first. Also reasonable to level up the first talent, and then turn 3, go Freebooter plus Offering. But now we'll get more food tokens out of it. Alright, points on a domain deck with up the Beanstalk. The main card we're worried about here is Leyline Binding, although I guess with double talent that's less of a concern. So yeah, this could be a winnable matchup. Since our opponent's not going to apply pressure very quickly, so we have time to kind of sculpt our draws. And then if we find our demon and keep hitting our land drops, we might be able to combo off. So I'll scry with a treasure map to be mana efficient. Opponent does have the perfect curve of up the beanstalk into an impended overlord to start ramping and draw a card. And yeah, this up the beanstalk is going to draw a lot of cards. Can sometimes play to our advantage if we just cast a demon even without our scavenger's talent in play since then our opponent might end up decking just from casting all those five drops since it's not optional to draw with beanstalk i will scry again with treasure map hoping to draw land or a demon i'll keep the demon so now we just need to worry about hitting our land drops and i will use fanatical offering here to play a land for a turn, hopefully. Perfect. Alright, so we're actually pretty close to comboing off. I still do need to level up the scavenger's talent, but don't want to waste a treasure on it. So two food tokens, one treasure, one map. If they have a leyline binding, they can now cast it for one mana. So if they have multiples, we could still be in trouble. Harvester is fine. Good against aggro. But uh, we don't care. Alright, take our turn. Flip the treasure map. So we've got plenty of treasures. Don't need another talents. So I could cast the Excruciator right now. But I think it's going to be more satisfying if we level up the talents first. Also, for what it's worth, since we bottomed a talent, we know we're going to draw one if we cast a demon. Since it's going to be in the bottom six, so that's also good insurance. So I'll just pass a turn. And then next turn, cast Excruciator and immediately mill them to death. Because I think we would have been a little bit short of doing it last turn. One's got another Overlord, hard cast, drawing with Beanstalk. So they could still have one Leyline Binding available, but we can beat one. So it's showtime, cast Excruciator, uncounterable for what it's worth. Opponent's gonna have six cards left in their library, and just sacking a treasure token can mill them for two. So that's gonna be a nice and easy way to mill them to death. Mill is sometimes a weakness of these domain decks. Since, again, they do tend to draw a lot of cards. So if a deck has enough interaction for their large creatures, and then has a couple of Jaces, for instance, it's a very winnable matchup. Leyline Binding a response is admirable, but it's just going to help us speed up the kill, since they're actually going to end up drawing from an empty library in my turn, as opposed to getting another untapped step. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a very good hand. All the combo pieces, including even a treasure map, which can make it easier to win the same turn we cast Excruciator. And then talent, we can immediately start leveling up as well. But our opponent is on red aggro with a turn one ley line. So a single cut down may not be enough to keep us alive. Swiss Spear is next. Anoint is a good draw. 
So now I think we just cut down. Don't want to play any silly games with a ley line in play. Otherwise our opponent may be able to manifest dreads to creatures in response or just get the Swiss spear out of range. Now Hardfire Hero is a good one to exile, so we don't take any damage. Would have loved to have Treasure Map in play, so we could have at least cried if they don't make me play Annoyance. But uh, yeah, Hardfire Hero can kill us, so gotta respect it here, pass a turn with mana up. I doubt our opponent's gonna go all in in the face of three open mana, so then next turn I can play Treasure Map and still Anoint alongside it. Opponent also has a scamp, so now things get a little trickier if they start splitting up their pump spells. Still playing my treasure map over leveling up the talent, so I can use my mana at instant speed. So now they might be more inclined to start pumping up their creatures, and I'll put an upkeep stop as well. Good to keep hitting those line drops. Turn inside out, yep, so they're probably going to target the scamp with the other one. Not going to anoint now since it exiles, so there's no drawback to letting those spells resolve. And I think I'm going to be patient on anoints. If our opponent tries to fling with a cell sword, we're still good to go. And our opponent's going for it. So in response, exile it so they don't get to deal damage and they don't get to manifest dread. And now we're just facing a 2-2 creature. Still need to try and find answers to it. Blink Breaker can maybe chum block for a turn. And we can level up the talent as well. All right, so we survived what could have been an easy turn two or three kill. Got a block. And then our opponent gets to play a cell sword, but we will get a food token and an extra one one to chump with as well. And then I think I still need to scry with the treasure map since I won't be able to play the demon even with a land. But a land on top is probably still acceptable. That way next turn I should be able to play the demon. Let's see, so we'll transform the treasure map as it will have three counters. It's going to be tapped. So we'll have four lands and then three treasure tokens. One treasure token left after casting the excruciator. So I guess not enough to mill the opponent on the spot. So in that case we maybe wait and look for removal here. Find a swamp anyway. So I'm most likely sacking a food token this turn. Leveling up the talent doesn't seem worth it. But we could still be dead to another pump spell. Phase down card could also be some different creature for all we know. So do we block it or not? I mean, if it's a scamp, they can still flip it and sacrifice it. If it's Hardfire Hero blocking it, I guess maybe worse than just taking it, but I'll try this. And then can take two. Make another food and can gain six here. Opponent does have another Hardfire Hero. So upkeep stop to flip the treasure map. Can mill the opponent at this point, doesn't really matter. So yeah, if we flip the treasure map, maybe it's still good to keep a land on top so I don't need to sack as many treasure tokens. So keep the swamp. 
So now I get to play the demon. And then after the demon's in play, I can still mill them for four, so that's not quite going to be enough to immediately win the game. So I guess in that case we may as well wait. So I could mill them for four right now. If I still had an extra food token, we could have won. Take three. All right, so we're still alive. Turned out to be a cell sword. Take our turn, draw an extra card. And then now we can pretty easily close it out here. Can uh, mill our opponents. Mill them again. And then fanatical offering. We're still going to be fine here. And there we go. So very close one. But yeah, I think taking that hit from Hardfire Hero and Scamp might have actually done it for us, as opposed to trying to exile one of them, and then Cell Sword ends up uh, comboing off onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand. Mostly looking for Scavenger's Talent here. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one planes. So play treasure map. Don't really need to attack with a freebooter on the off chance that they're playing Elspeth Smite. And a carrot cake, so a white tokens deck. So it's gonna be a grindy matchup. Hopefully they don't have many answers to enchantments. And uh, yeah, we can just pass a scry with a treasure map. Swamp could be okay, but we'll draw more lands naturally. So I need to be a bit picky and look for the scavenger's talent. So play another freebooter, can maybe start attacking. And they can make another token with Carrot Cake, or sank their current token to draw. Would be unfortunate if they have a temporary lockdown. Alright, Beza also makes sense. So I could cut down my own Freebooter here so they don't get the fish tokens. I actually don't hate that. So... Yeah, I was gonna scry with Treasure Map regardless. Don't need more freebooters. And line breaker is not necessary. So Beza doesn't do anything here, just gains four life, I guess. Alright, so take our draw. Do we want to scry with treasure map? I guess we may as well. And another treasure map is fine. Our opponent is looking to play a longer game, so we should have time to get value out of both treasure maps. And then with all that extra mana, it's going to be easier to cast Excruciator and then immediately melt the opponent to death if we find the talent. So, yeah, good jump here. Let's well, scry again. Could also wait to maybe find our uh, sacrifice effect but can always sacrifice a random artifact token. And get to untap. Cut down can go to the bottom. And can scry again. Swamp can go, although it wouldn't be a terrible draw. Draw one anyway. So can sack 
a treasure to draw. And there's a talent. If they don't destroy it with maybe a get lost, we'll be able to combo next turn. So let's see if they have it. We'll just pass. And yeah, get lost, so to be expected, but that's all right. We'll find more. And we're not under too much pressure here. All right, Overlord making more tokens. So that does start adding up. Flip treasure map, find another talent. But they do have two mana up for another get loss potentially. So that is very much still a concern. But let's do some math. So if I were to play talent, level up, I can cast a demon and then still have enough treasures left to mill them out. So it is potentially worth a shot. Could also play the demon first, actually. Uh, it's still a little bit risky if there is a get lost involved, since we know the bottom cards don't include another scavenger's talent. So yeah, if they're smart about it and don't destroy the excruciator, but wait for the talent, we could be in trouble. But I think I go for it anyway. So play excruciator. And we can kind of figure out if our opponent does have a get lost based on how quickly they pass priority. Didn't seem like they had it. So play talents, make sure to tap treasure cove. And then now just sacking a random treasure token will mill them for two. Could also sack a map token. And there we have it. No cards left, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. We've got a good control hand, lots of removal and a treasure map. So we're well equipped to deal with aggro. And even against control, Shielder's Edict still has some uses. But it is aggro. So yeah, not gonna mess around, let's just disfigure. And then can play treasure map. Next turn scry and still cast a two mana removal spell. Opponent does have scamp. Good one to exile with annoyance so it doesn't trigger. And sure we'll scry and upkeep. Lands are good and then we're looking for the combo pieces. So we'll keep the excruciator even though we're pretty far from casting it. And then pass with mana up. Not gonna answer this camp unless they make me Might of the Meek. Potentially reason enough to annoyance so they don't get to draw. I think we let that happen. So they maybe feel comfortable casting another pump spell on the camp. Right, otherwise just take one. And a Swiss Pier, so that is gonna make Shielder's Edict less effective. I think we still let that go. Name Demon, play Freebooter, and then Scry. So we can block this camp, and then we might see some pump spells in response. Opponent with Felonious Rage on the Swiss Spear instead. Could now Shielder's Edict before damage, so that uh, our opponent doesn't get the Detective token. But I'm um, kind of expecting Pump Spill on Scamp anyway. Another Felonious Rage. Can let that resolve if we're gonna anoint. Anything else? Nope. So now I'm fine to cast the Anoint. We'll take five. 
opponent's going to turn inside out to Swiss Spear, so... Yeah, we do take some damage, but they won't have a way to sacrifice Swiss Spear with a Cell Sword this turn. And so they also won't get any additional tokens. And then definitely bottom. Make sure to put an upkeep stop. Flipping the treasure map, and then now we just need our scavenger's talents, pretty much. So bottom another one. And fanatical offering is not bad either. Alright, so we'll pass. Again, chump and offering. And we can still cast Edict if needed. But can maybe hang on to my treasures. End of turn. Could disfigure Swiss Spear. I think I'm just gonna untap. And then draw with a treasure cove. And it's just a matter of time until we find Scavenger's Talent. Also possible we can actually win the game with Excruciator, but we'll go for the combo. For now, take one. Not afraid of getting burnt out in this particular matchup. And taking out Swiss Spear could be bad if they have more ways of making tokens. Although I guess Prowess would also get it out of range from Disfigure anyway. But yeah, we can play it slow. And pass a turn back. And again, just take one. Bone's gonna fling with Cell Sword. Alright, that's interesting. So they would be able to then play a 3 3 Cell Sword afterwards. I think we let that happen. No need to prevent a 2 damage here. So they might have a couple more of those Cell Swords in hand. So now could be reasonable to Edict. And then we still have a Disfigure and now Anoint left, so those are both perfect. Still waiting for our talent. We know three of our bottom cards, so we're not that likely to draw into a talent otherwise. There we go. Opponent plotting a slick shot can be quite scary. So let's see. Can play talent. And then if I level it up, I can sack a map token and a treasure token after playing the Excruciator. So then our opponent would have one card left in deck after taking their draw step, since we're a bit light on things to sacrifice. Yeah, maybe I'll wait another turn on Excruciator. And can level this up all the way. That way I can also maybe get a creature back, which will also trigger... Scavenger's Talents. So our opponent probably needs to go for it here. And there's a Slick Shot. Attack. No blocks. Turn inside out for starters. So we could disfigure in response. And then still anoint if they cast more of those, but... I'm placing Crescendo. So, this should pretty much wrap it up. None of their cards work. Get to untap. Play Excruciator. Could play a treasure map too if we want. But yeah, the goal is just to sacrifice three random things to Scavenger's Talents. Milling them for six. And that'll do it.
All right, took us a while to find the talents, but uh, we had the game under control the entire time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. Opponent on... Is it a red aggro deck? It is. So this figure is a good answer to it. Question is if we need to keep it up right away. I guess we do. If they try and pump the scamp, we can remove it. Now probably just disfigure the challenger, since at least my 1-1s can trade for their scamp. Even though scamp is kind of scarier between the two, if they eventually try and combo with it. And then this turn, maybe go talent plus freebooter. And next turn we can treasure map activate. Playing both creatures in the face of Scamp also not the best, because then they can just trade for both. So I mentioned they'll have a Monstrous Rage here, and that's gonna happen. Yep. Still get to make a treasure, scry, and get a food token. Swamp could be good, but we also need to find more removal if we want to survive. So, might have to be greedy here, put it on the bottom. And find an anoint, perfect. So if I want to treasure map Scry, I wouldn't be able to anoint, and I imagine we'll need to use it this turn. I'll play the Link Breaker instead. And then we don't need to waste our treasure token. Another challenger. Yeah, opponent going white with lots of creatures. Is not really what we want to see in this spot. Right, it doesn't seem like they have any pump spells left, so I'll exile this camp while we can. Chump, make another food. At least the food can also keep us alive for a while. But it's pretty important that we keep hitting those land drops. Fanatical offering is next. So... I can maybe sacrifice a food token to the offering to hit our land drop for a turn and then still play treasure map at least. Alright, that's good. And then it's probably going to be worth it to scry as well. Can scry again an upkeep and just try and keep all the cheap answers we can get our hands on. A pump spell here represents a lot of extra damage, especially with Valiant. So I'll block the Heartfire hero if we can trade, that's good. If they target the hero, at least they're not enabling Valiant. So our opponent's gonna let it happen, make another food token. So we've got at least six life we can gain. And now we need to find our demon as well. Anoint's good enough. So we can answer one challenger and sack a food token. I don't think I bother with another treasure map. Or do I also need to level up the talent eventually? But yeah, I think for now we'll uh, play it safe. No blocks. And turn inside out. So we'll see what Valiant reveals. A Might of the Meek, that's a good one too. Hoping they target the same challenger, they don't. So they get another redraw. And the other Valiant trigger reveals Heartfire Hero, makes sense why they targeted the second challenger. We're at four. And that's a lot of creatures. Maybe should have scryed an upkeep here. Can do it now. Talent we don't need. So I have one food token left. Technically keeps me alive if they don't top deck anything scary. And then I'll wait on leveling up the talents. 
could also get back a creature to maybe block, but it's going to have a finality counter on it, so it's not going to provide a lot of value. So any pump spells lethal here, but we're still at three. Let's try with the map, and I don't think Freebooter is going to cut it. I guess I can play it. Sacrifice a bunch of stuff to get back another creature. Get a food token, which can gain me three life. So maybe Freebooter's still serviceable. Still wanna scry here. And draw with Cove. And a fanatical offering could also come in handy. So now I can sack to the offering to get a food token. And then chump with a freebooter as well. And then still gain three life at instant speed. And then now if we can find our demon, we might be able to win in the same turn we cast it. Still need to level up the talents. Slick shots is scary if they can enable it. Snag Freebooter, make a food, bottom swamp, and snag the food. So we're still in the game. Flip the treasure map. Another offering can do the same as last turn, make a food to maybe stay in the game. Could also level up the talent first, which is something I might have to do anyway. That way I can mill myself to maybe mill the demon and get it back. So let's see, do I draw first? If I draw the demon, I can still cast it and potentially win the game, so I guess we'll give that a shot first. Although I guess casting Offering is equivalent, or is it... I guess Treasure Cove is a little awkward because it's colorless, so it doesn't cast the demon. So we'd have to tap the Treasure Cove in order to cast Offering. Which is one fewer draw step, potentially. Mill for two. Excruciator, sadly, I should have reordered the triggers here. I'll still keep it on top since we can uh, end up uh, bringing it back with a level three talent. But of course, just drawing it would have been better. But yeah, now we actually have a bunch of removal left. I get to return the demon as a blocker. Now I can mill my opponent since there's no point in milling myself. I guess we could technically find another demon, but I would prefer to just uh, cast it now. Sack a bunch of map tokens. Could have also played the Link Breaker, I suppose. But now we have multiple removal spells at the ready. And can also sack the food token, spending all our treasures. Another hard fire is fine. And then block probably the challenger. Sack food token for starters. So if the demon actually triggered when we reanimated with Scavenger's Talent, this game would have been over, but sadly that's not how it works. So we could let damage happen. And now we'll get to draw two cards per turn. So that should speed up the process of finding another Excruciator. Shieldred's Edict and a land. 
So play Link Breaker. Question is, do I want to sank stuff to Treasure Cove? Because having these left means it's easier to combo kill with Excruciator once we find it. Cutting down my own Link Breaker is also something to consider. I think I'll use one Treasure Cove for now. Another talent means more food. Alright, pass a turn. And I don't think I'm sacking anything. Well, this game's gone on for a lot longer than I thought it would, as our opponent keeps drawing creatures. Block block, and then by sacking we prevent them from using this camp, basically. Well, I guess it's cut down and not quite sacrifice. So that'll make a pair of food tokens. We'll sack one. And keep milling my opponent, I guess. We might get there the old-fashioned way. 19 cards left. So we're still at three. And sure, we'll take our draw step. Draw two. Find another cut down. And draw with Treasure Cove. Find a swamp. I guess we'll do it again. Last treasure. 13 cards left, C11. Find a freebooter. So I can play it, cut it down. Make a bunch of food. This figure, I guess, could be fine. Sure. I think we're gonna get there without another demon. So I can, uh, sank the food. Mill for four. And yeah, we're just gonna mill them out here. Could also use a level three talent to sack more stuff if needed. But yeah, that's already gonna be enough. So never cast Excruciator, still got there with double Scavenger's Talent. And that's nice. All right, so we got to see our mono black demon combo in action. Sadly, not the most competitive deck out there. Takes a lot of setup to get everything in place, and then the slightest amount of interaction with our enchantment, especially, can prevent us from comboing off. But at least we managed to beat the mono red deck a few times. But of course, we did design our deck to beat mono red by including all those instant speed answers. And once you have enough instant speed removal, you could just win the game with a ham sandwich. You don't need this complicated Rube Goldberg machine to close out the game, a shieldret will do the job much faster. So again, I wouldn't recommend this for the ranked ladder, but it's still decent in the play queue especially, can still get your daily wins done, but could also maybe explore other iterations of this deck, maybe playing blue for other mill effects like Jace, and then you don't need to worry about the scavenger's talent getting removed, but of course you will need to draw Jace, and then playing additional colors also makes it a little trickier to maybe cast the demon on curve, so I did like the idea of having lots of swamps so we can cast all those cheap removal spells without needing to worry about tap lands, and that will give you a better chance against moderate like we managed to showcase. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.